Earlier this year, I attempted to speedrun all trophies in Elden Ring. If you remember, we thought we set the world record only to have our run rejected by a technicality. Today, I'm rectifying that with not only another run where we actually make sure to follow the rules, but two runs where we actually remember to follow the rules and set two world records in the same day. To watch silly ideas like this live, follow us on Twitch. We're coming up with new ways to play Elden Ring all the time. Join the Patreon to support the channel. It's the best place to do it. It's where we get to keep most of the money. And there's going to be some exclusive videos there that are a little niche for the main channel. Full episodes, just kind of specifically targeted. Finally, do a like and subscribe speed run. See how fast you can do it. Whoever goes fastest wins uh, bragging rights. Speaking of fast, let's Let's do that. Starting off, we make it all the way to the Kale Church before realizing I put the name in the title wrong. So it a reset. By the way, we tightened up the video here. There was a timer on the stream. This looks better. We just got to keep the screen open for the speedrun archive. You can see that on the VOD channel where we will sometimes post VODs. Corey, put that in. It's important. Reset and start the actual run. Cowabunga, fastest way to Limgrave. Crafting kit is still important. No, wait, no, it's not. That was a whoopsie. The horse is faster, maybe not faster than zipping or whatever, but I'm not learning glitches. I'm using my superior raw gamer knowledge to figure out how to go as fast as possible. Strength tier is probably good, right? That's 10 more strength. That's gotta be damage. This one hurts. We have to ignore Alex. It's slower. Nobody wants to help me and I'm dying. Physic tier? More like fastic tier. I don't know. It's good. Hey, we're in the dragon barrow. Another time loss. We open the door and touch the grace. Didn't have to do that. What, are we going to come back here for the beast spells? Beast spells are terrible. Fort Faroth is speedy as hell. We warp out so we don't get killed by rats, but more importantly, it's fast. Actually could have gone faster just grabbing the Dectus piece and quitting there. The few runes we get from the golden rune and rat against sword seal aren't going to do much. Now here's something really slow. Getting the pickle and spending four minutes with the bad dragon. But think of this as stretching before a run. If you don't want to get hurt, you have to loosen things up. Google stretching with bad dragons so it doesn't hurt on your work computer to learn more about epic speed tech. I'm mostly just cracking vigor. Anytime we die to a boss, that's a big time loss. Don't die, don't lose time. Big brain stuff. It works out great against the Bloodhound Knight, letting us strategically trade our unsheath attack. Obviously, that's what we're doing. I'm not just bad at avoiding these hits. I don't believe you. Wow, we were able to get the Bloodhound Fang without fighting a single remembrance boss. It's almost like we're starting the game with it since we can do the whole game that way. Is this some sort of extra beginning role? Terrible name for a series. I gotta work on that. I hate Mount Gelmnir. It's too big and too slow. Raya lets us skip a lot of that. She wants us to kill Boggart. Well, actually, she just wants her necklace back. She's not specific about how we do that. So we'll fight him. That's actually slow, though. Fighting is slow. Just buy the necklace. It's faster. If we want the other piece of the Dectus Medallion, we need to imagine going fast in Fort Height. But what if you wanted to eat fast in Fort Height? Then you should check out today's sponsor factor. Look, I'll be honest, making these videos does not leave me a lot of time to make food. So if you're busy like me, Factor will send you meals that are ready to eat in two minutes, that are still packed with flavor and suited to whatever your dietary needs are. Trying to be calorie smart? They got meals for 550 calories or less. Need some protein? Protein Plus meals. That's got 30 grams of protein per serving or more. Vegetarian and vegan? Hopefully I don't have to explain what that means, but yeah, they got that too. There are over 35 different meal options that are going to tantalize your taste buds. I've been enjoying Factor for this whole year and I want you to start enjoying Factor too. That's why you should head to factor75.com or just click the link in the description and enter offer code HEIGHT50 at checkout for 50% off your first Factor box. That is offer code HEIGHT50. So you can imagine eating some tasty food pretty fast in Fort Height. Now, let's go back to playing Elden Ring fast. Zooming through Lernia until we do the little bridge jump and the game says we didn't wait enough on the rock. If the game is gonna do delayed falling deaths, I wish they'd at least have you hover in the air a bit like Wily e. Coyote. Like, come on, that'd be funny. I get to save a little bit of time with an early quit out as we grab the key and warp to the other side of Lornia by examining seals. Raya Lucaria Cave has some quick somber stones one, two, and three. EG sells them. It's probably faster to just go over there and buy them, but I'm cheap and I'm not good at this. Oh my God. 
He made it! It's definitely faster to kill the Crystallion at the bottom than ride the elevator up to the top, so I might be doing it wrong, but I'm doing it wrong as fast as possible. On the way to the deck to Slip, there's a nice free rune arc. Get that grace after we ride up so we don't have to ride the elevator later. Worth mentioning, all this running around to level up the sword might seem slow, but since you can fast travel for many grace, and these are places we'll have to go to get remembrances anyway, it's not really a problem. Raya can send us to her mom's house really fast, and there's a somber stone four being held by this thing. His name is Mr. Hands, and it's actually easier to fight him on a horse. Google Mr. Hands hands horse on your work computer to find out more, but I just bring it over to the fire to get some free hits and make it safer and faster. This thing is really aggressive with a whole ass body as its hitbox. That's a somber stone four through the town. We'll get the six, then the five and the shortcut for when we come back to fight the noble plus six weapon. Let's take another short detour. We're going to spend six minutes to get stupid over leveled and the abandoned cave goes fine. We hit the clean rots really, really hard. It takes less than a minute. If you kill the first one faster, the other one can't gank you. Getting hit is slow. Hitting things is fast. Nerd Juice isn't bad, then Patches takes one, two, three hits. Wow, that's Pickles and a Golden Scarab, so when we kill stuff, it's going to pay off big time. Wait, I'm definitely not going to go farm Pickles. That's slow. So maybe this isn't fast. Oh well, time for the Godskin Noble. He's weak to slashing and bleed. Both are things we get from the Bloodhound Fang. Nice. We were trying to roll through the game, but this dude can literally roll over us. Can be great for a punish window if you get it in the right place, but sometimes you get it in the wrong place, like the back of a Volkswagen, and die. Big bummer. Come back and slash it up until this Michelin Man is a shredded tire. With Thicky Rich out of the way, we're able to go through the shortcut for an extra Stone Sword Key to go through the Fog Door later. The Dagger Talisman is alright. It's 17% more crit damage on our Beef Sword that cuts up enemies like a hot knife through butter. Wait, we could make it hotter. With a somber stone seven, then a nine in the dragon barrel, and an eight in the dragon barrel for a plus nine sword. Enough with this slow stuff. Now it's time for speed. We're over an hour into the run and haven't fought Margit yet. That might bode poorly for our speedrunner, but it bodes much worse for Margit. Dude gets absolutely demolished. Gostok doesn't get demolished for once. Killing him is slower, so we just ask him to open the gate, then run through it. Just this once! Everybody lives! Godric is really good at catching these hands because he has extra hands with which to catch them. Whoopsie doopsie in phase two, I should have just hit him with some R2s. The part of the Ash of War with the back step pushes us into his fire breath. Embarrassing hit. We'll take a detour to activate Godric's Great Rune for plus five to every stat. Three minute detour for 40 virtual levels. Eventually we're going to make up that time. Gilka is another short detour, but good lord, we can show the whole fight here if I just stretch the explanation out a little bit. Maybe I'll show five intros for my videos to hit the 10 minute marker for watch time. Oh, never mind, we're done. Time to dis prove the impassable Great Bridge by passing it incredibly easily. Barely an inconvenience. Radon time. We get those buddies with us and the whole gang seems to be on speedrun strats. Radon does not get to jump up. Technically his horse is what jumps, uh, but Leonard doesn't get to jump either. Nakron time. Get a few ghost glove warts, then delete the Mimic Tier. When we get the Mimic Tier ourselves, it's gonna be much better. Which we will, since it's like kinda on the way for all the Ronnie stuff we have to do anyway. Speaking of, let's go do all of Volcano Manor. Lots of running around. It's funny that if you want to do the Fia ending, you just have to do like the whole Ronnie quest or 75% of it, I guess. Miyazaki clearly has a favor. Hey, were we fighting Loretta in the background? It's already done. Doesn't matter that the ghost can't bleed or can't crit. The sword does enough damage. Now we can say hi to Ronnie. I thought she hated me for about 10 minutes, but in the last 30 seconds, she said I was probably fine. Let's fight her mom instead. And her mom's dog, Red Wolf of Radagon, just takes two hits. One and two. We're routing it this way to grab the stone sword key from the fountain. Then run up and quit out behind Moon so he doesn't chase us up the elevator. Speedruns are measured by in-game time, so it's not really a time loss. Obviously, Renala is going to be a one cycle for phase one. The gold kids spawn a little bit inconveniently, but oh well. Then in phase two, some dogs get in our way. I only wanted to kill one of your dogs, Renala. I can't believe you made me do this. Finally, we get the best Bloodhound Knight Spirit Ashes. Not Flo, he's pretty shit. Instead, we go through Nakron, light a few torches on the way down and into the Knight's Sacred Ground. Getting the Mimic adds about five seconds as we open the fog gate, but effectively doubles our damage. And we're like a 50% boost. It's not all that aggressive. Further underground, we get the Great Ghost Glove Wart and the Finger Slayer Blade for Ronnie. We'll trade that in for the Carrion Study Hall statue that we need for four to sacks later, but also to open up the Warp Gate in Rena's Rise. Into the Incel River Main, say hi to Phalanx Demon's Holes, and fudge up going up the wrong path. If you don't need a Somber 7, just stay downstairs. Oh well, I'm sure we're going to make up that time somewhere else. We're actually still on world record pace at this point, believe it or not. Get Roderica going, get that second pocket, and buy all the weed we need to fully upgrade the Mimic tier. I'm 6'5", 220, and there's two of me. I'm yeah, I think it's fast time. Just the two of us.
Rikard is kind of like two bosses in one, or one boss inside another, not in a sexual way. Last week we did the Nuzlocke and people were asking, why didn't we just give the Mimic the Serpent Hunter? Here's why, it's fucking stupid. Just bum rushes the magma. You don't have to turn the stove off when the Mimic tier comes to your house. You have to take the stove out of your house because the fool will try to eat your stove. If you're not counting on it to do everything though, it's pretty great. Keeps the pressure up, does just as much damage as we do, and we don't need to upgrade to the spear to get better. I think some people use the Serpent Hunter for their speed runs. I don't know. I'm not going to research it like some nerd would. Kind of wish I researched this moose. I don't know how to stop the moose from running away. I do my best though. Slashing its feet seems like a good idea. It even gets a heal off though, so we have to hit its heals more. Next up, a lake of rot, and we don't have very good flasks. Honestly, this is one of the closest fights we've had, and it's with a body of water. At least it's not leading to another boss that's just going to teleport around and waste a bunch of my time. You sure about that? Oh my god, dude, please stop moving. Just, oh my god. This is the worst kind of boss for a speedrun. It's got funky movements, unpunishable moves, and ways to take themselves to the other side of the arena. I don't know, maybe just give us an ATV or something if all the bosses are just gonna run away. Maybe something a little more period accurate like a jalopy. Speaking of bosses, I wish I had the jalopy for the Valiant Gargoyles. I wouldn't use it to close gaps though, I would just drive anywhere fucking else. Having a plus nine weapon, or more accurately two plus nine weapons makes it a little bit better. It's one of those fights where the only way to make it better is to make it shorter, like Danny DeVito or a strawberry cake. Fun fact, I have the bladder of a prairie dog and a lifetime ban from the Minnesota Zoo, so the cutscene where we ride up a waterfall, very fitting place to take a pee break. Ants drop free rune arcs and roots drop the tarnished until we die. Got to practice those quit out splits apparently. These champs take a bit to show up for some reason, but it's one full bloodhound finesse combo for each of them. And we open up the gate to the royal capital, then warp through it. Usually I like to go through the tree sentinel because deep root depths is irksome, but hey, if we're gonna fight 40 snacks later, might as well set this up. Earth tree avatar takes 15 seconds for 50,000 runes. Time is money. How do you determine what your time is worth? Quitting out is a great way to stop the Lindell knight from shocking your butt, and the ritual with shield talisman is a great way to stop yourself from dying. I think dying is slow, but maybe it's just a quick moment like any other, before shifting off into a peaceful non-existence. I could quit out for Godfrey, but I'd rather just run in a little bit, summon the mimic here. You could have him slamming himself into the fog wall trying to fight Erdtree guardians outside, but just pull in a little bit further and he'll actually fight the guy we're here to fight. Morgoth next, he can bleed unlike Goldfree, which means by the time we hit phase two, he's already almost dead. Look at him, coughing up a lung. Yeah, let's put him out of his misery. Obviously, I'm not going to die fighting Morgoth. I almost died reading chat and falling off in the royal capital. At least I've improved my quit out splits. Spending runes on the elevator? That's a spending move. You gotta wait for it anyway, and it's better than trying to talk to someone else. Leave me alone. This isn't a soda fountain. I didn't bring my jalopy down here to talk to you. Four Biden lands go fast. Honestly, things have been pretty good this week. Climate course seems cool, and he hopped on the UAW picket line. Guess he's been watching the videos. Keep it up, Brandon, and we'll do Dark Brandon, secret starting class. Mountaintops of the Giants next. Good lord, it takes so long going from beating Morgan to fighting Fire Giant. And and that little slip in the royal capital doesn't actually add any time. Remember, quitting out doesn't do anything. It's just 16 minutes of walking. I can't really narrate that well. I'm not Tolkien. Fire Giant is really easy, but decides to jank us and stand with his foot hanging off the ledge where we can't hit it. Then the fire breath in phase two kills the horse, hits us, and hits us again in the span of two frames. I literally had to slow it down in post to see that it was two hits, because if it wasn't, the ritual shield talisman wasn't working. How are you not dead? DLC idea. Just give the horse the flask. Stop asking me if I want to give the horse a flask. I just always want to give the horse a flask. Whatever. First try. Not a problem. 10 minute for Amazula. In and out. Like a West Coast burger or a West Coast Tinder date. Bring Bernie for the Godskins. It actually gives them more health. Not that fast. He also distracts them so the hits are free and you don't have to waste time dodging or getting hit. So it kind of washes out. Swag jump is actually fast, I think. That's just natural speed running I've always done. Fun fact, I did not know there was another way down here until like a month ago. This is what I did the first time I played the game, and it's just kind of what I've always done. Bird Run isn't a problem. Malakath could be, so we quit out, so the Mimic doesn't try to fight a fog wall. Dude hates fog. I got him a copy of Silent Hill for Halloween, and he ate it. Gums were bleeding. He was crying the whole time. It was uncomfy. We get the stance break right before phase two starts. Unfortunate. Although, honestly, I'm maybe better at phase two. I guess it's fine. Stance break again. We missed the crit. Ugh. Still fine. Now, is Gideon going to be free? No, but he's also not going to be very expensive. Just kind of rolls away weigh a lot, so it takes a long time to slice him up. Kind of messed up here. After we kill the old man, we put his clothes on. They have better physical defense, and I'm very good at menuing. Ah, 
That's, uh, oof, that's a time loss. Godfrey hits hard, but so do we. In fact, we hit so hard, we stance break him right before phase two. Again, god damn it. Phase two starts with some swaggy finessing, teleporting through the spikes. Pretty cool. And yeah, it's pretty much over here. Radagon time. Hey, I'm actually dodging the hammer slammer pretty consistently now. That's exciting. Then the Elden Beast starts running away and teleporting. Since we don't have a jalopy, we just have to run. Still fine, just a time suck. And speaking of time suck, all the other remembrances. They really slow down the all remembrances category. Clean up, clean up, everybody, everybody. Ugh, Niall isn't even a remembrance boss. He's just a guy who hates medallions or loves medallions or he loves elevators so much he doesn't want anyone else to ride them. Whatever, we'll fight him while the mimic handles the soldiers. It's kind of sloppy, who cares? On the way to the second piece, we grab the dexterity physic tier. Damn, really should have done this earlier. The dex tier would have been a huge damage buff earlier. Kill the old man, it's faster than go down to the snowfield. The fog has gotten me lost in the past. We pop a little light on the map, then kill Anastia for a somber stone and forget to actually use it. Whoops. Penguin Noble goes fine taking us to the Moguin Palace. I generally like to take a little bit of extra time to buy some rune arcs from the merchant in the dark cave, but we have enough. We're not gonna die again. Well, hopefully we're not gonna die 10 more times. Will we die against Moog? That's a complicated question. If you think saying the word no is complicated, we don't have the Moog tier, but you don't need it if you just beat him to death before he can stop counting. Dude loves counting in blood. Are we sure he's not the count from Sesame Street? If he is, we should probably stop that. He should not be close to kids. Placidious Axe is the worst kind of boss, teleport without access to a jalopy. I love when I dodge a boss's attack and then swing in, but because I dodge, he's already gone. And if you don't dodge, you're just on the ground because he hit you and he's teleported away. Not great for a speed run, especially because it ends with the Omega laser, which we live, but we didn't have any flasks left. So yeah, after that, I got hit by more of the aftershock AOEs. Did you dodge the claw? Don't worry. There's an aftershock that will hit you. Back again, big time loss, since this is actually one of the longest runbacks in the game. What is this? Literally any other Souls game? So it'd actually be a great run back in Dark Souls. If you don't like the Omega Laser, here's an idea. Have your Mimic hit a bleed before he can teleport away. Do that. Great job, buddy. Sorry I made you so sad last week you jumped off a cliff. The Liturgical Town must have liked my D&D videos better because it insists we fell off. One of the archers drops their armor, which is better than the Samurai starting set for everything except Holy and Lightning Resistance. Obviously, this bit of RNG is going to be the difference maker and forever kill this category. You know what I love in the Halleck Tree? The Crystallion that sometimes just shotgun blasts you to death. Sometimes it misses, sometimes it doesn't. Today it didn't and we died. Now Loretta goes fast, yada yada. We talk about this a lot, but she doesn't have enough health. She can bleed and she dies. Why are we going to Fortisax next? Because because I almost forgot to put his splits in my list. Because you're a professional! I'm a professional! That means it's carry and study hall time. And would you believe this preceptor is a pain in the ass? Literally does not let us move without killing them. Oh well, if you insist. Up top, grab the curse mark of death, then back to Fia underground. Oh, she shows up here after you burn down the earth tree, so you don't have to do her whole quest. Other than just, you know, some hugs. Riveting hug gameplay. Elden Ring really is the first hug type game. We have some dragon wound grease in our inventory, which will boost our damage by 20% against Fortis Axe. Apparently Vike did the same thing with Lancey Axe. Google Vike gives Lancey Axe the grease on your work computer to find out more. It's an Another boss that would be better with a jalopy. All right, we obviously saved the worst boss for last, Melania. To get a sneak preview of the L's we're about to take, it's L a fell. The L's so big they L'd it twice. We even die grabbing the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman. It's 20% more physical resistance, which should help us live a waterfowl dance. You sure about that? Oh, wow. Well. Well, all right, second attempt goes better. First attempt, honestly, was going okay. We just did so well, we got waterfowled. But yeah, curved greatsword, big stance damage, bleed. It's like this was made for Melania, except actually it should have fire. Oh, you can put blood flame blade on it, even though it's a somber weapon. God, they really just love this thing. And so do I. We were able to beat all remembrances in three hours, 59 minutes and 42 seconds. Unfortunately, the all remembrances glitchless world record is one hour, 50 minutes and 48 seconds. On PC, on console, no submitted runs, which means that despite being two hours slower, we still have the top time on console. Hell, we are an hour slower than the slowest run ever submitted to this category on PC. Surely other people have done this faster, but no one had such little shame that they would submit it for a world record. Gamers, I have such little shame. Now, if you remember the beginning of this video, I did say I got two world records in one day, and this video is almost over. So did I take my time to actually learn Turn around and do a run so fast I can talk about it before the video ends? <laughs> like that's ever gonna happen. 
Nah, the All Remembrances category on console also had no submissions. Technically, we did that glitchless too, but there's nothing in the rulebook that says you have to use glitches in the All Remembrances non-glitchless category. So I just did the same run, again, and saved 12 minutes. If I was a real speedrunner, I'd be happy with that. Wait, what am I saying? Of course I'm a real speedrunner. I have two speedrun world records, and I set them both in one day. To watch more world record gameplay, follow me on Twitch. We find new ways to play Elden Ring all the time. Join the Patreon if you want to support the channel. It's the best place to do it. We get to keep most of the money there. And make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the next episode.